So, hello Booktube, I am back after a uh, somewhat of a long absence and uh, just to inform you, it's going to be even longer absence because my August is very busy and very full of travel. But in the meantime I'm back with uh, not one, not two, but three family sagas. Still quite different books, but they all fit within, you could call it, the genre of family saga in the sense that they follow multiple characters who all are members of the same family over a somewhat large span of time. So the three books uh, I want to discuss with you, as you might have seen from the thumbnails, is um, first of all Elizabeth McCracken's Bowl Away, which uh, we read with the Discord um, book, sorry, the, the Booktube Discord book club uh, a while ago, two months ago in fact. Um, and that's by, yeah, Bowl Away by Elizabeth McCracken. Um, Kintu by Jennifer Nonsubuka Makumbi. Uh, Ugandan family saga, which I buddy read uh, with Sophia, also from the um, this book, Booktube Discord, I keep on messing up that name. Uh, and finally, uh, Celestial Bodies uh, by Joka Alharti, translated from the Arabic by Marlon Booth. Uh, and this was the uh, pick for my real life book club uh, down at the Clapham Junction Waterstone. So, Hello to all of you from that book group who are tuning in, and I hope you enjoy. So, uh, I'm going to start with the book I liked least of all, which was uh, Bowl Away, and I'm not alone in that. Uh, most of us during the um, discussion uh, turned out didn't really like this book. Uh, Vert described as Twee, which is, is part of it. So, uh, this is set in New England around the turn of the previous century. It's kind of wants to be focused around 10 pin bowling, or no, candle pin bowling, which is apparently a different type of bowling than the regular bowling, I don't know much about it. Uh, and, and there are some sections where it tries to kind of use that kind of bowling as a metaphor for life, but that falls flat. Um, the only character I really liked, not in the sense of the character being likeable, but as in that I liked reading about, uh, died a quarter of the way in. So, yeah. Uh, all of that uh, made it all fall a bit flat. I, while on the sentence, sense level, I kind of like the tone of the writing, kind of a bit of a detached, ironic uh, voice of the narrator. Um, yeah, it just wasn't enough to carry the book, uh, and uh, I didn't really enjoy the rest of it. So, uh, that was by the way, and that's about all I want to say. So then on to the two I enjoyed more, which is uh, Kintu and uh, Celestial Bodies. And it's interesting to kind of compare and contrast because while they're both family sagas, uh, they also are quite different in certain ways. Uh, and but what both of them have in common is that much more than uh, Bodo Way, they tie into kind of the history of, of the region and the, the countries they're from. So uh, Celestial Bodies from Oman. I'm not sure if I already mentioned that, and Kintu from Uganda. So let's start with Kintu. Uh, so uh, it is divided into a number of sections, and in each of the sections you follow a different member of this uh, clan, you could almost call it, or can call it, in fact, uh, of, of Ugandans. So the first section is set somewhere in the 1750s, uh, follows kind of the, the grand, the, the ancestor of this clan, uh, and then we get what is it, one, two, three, four, um, four books where we follow uh, a number of his descendants in kind of the present day and then the decades leading up to that. So uh, they are between their 20s and their 60s now in the present day. So uh, all of their lives uh, we follow them. Uh, and so it's quite an interesting choice. So um, let's start with what I. I how I enjoyed the book, so I really liked uh, the first section and, and reading about you know, historical Uganda um, pre-colonization because we kind of have this, this or we, but I kind of grew up with this image of, of Africa before you know Europeans arrived, you just had some people you know living in small villages and, and herding cows and that was it, um, but there were you know actual states and complex political systems already in place, um, which of course we did learn about because it made it easy to ju justify colonization, but 
Uh, so it's, it's interesting to read the historical fiction, uh, as that section of his novel is. Uh, it kind of shows a bit more of, of what life was like pre-colonization. Uh, so that was the first section. In the second section, we skip ahead to the present day, or almost the present day. And that I found a bit hard to get through. I didn't quite see the connection. It was kind of enjoyable on its own, but you kind of not seeing what the point was. Um, but then as we went through the next sections, kind of the book picked back up again for me. It was interesting to see these different lives of people kind of growing up in you know similar time periods, but still having very different experiences based on their exact circumstances uh, growing up. So in terms of, of time, because it's interesting thing, so this book is connected with the history of Uganda, so it's not like some you know, historical novels or family sagas where the people are really close to the movers and shakers and the big events happening, but you do see how everyone's life has been shaped by, to a certain extent, by the history of Uganda, or at least by, by the circumstances of Uganda that they grew up in. Um, so that's it's interesting that the book starts in the pre-colonial era and then skips ahead to the post-colonial era. Right? So there's none of it is set during the colonial period. Um, you only see kind of the aftermath, which must have been a conscious choice, I think, and, and it really makes it a Ugandan book. It's a book about Uganda very much, and, and there's very little reference to... Um, the outside world, uh, even if you compare it to something like um, Welcome to Lagos, which I discussed several months ago, um, or Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's books, although those you know, those books are, are you know, about Ni um, Nigeria and Biafra, but there's still you know, an important presence to the outside world, England, the UK, uh, America, whatever, still play a role in those stories. Whereas this is really a Ugandan book focusing on Ugandans living in Uganda and, and having very little to do with the outside world, apart from Tanzania and Rwanda, but you know, those are bordering countries. Um, so it makes it a really interesting you know, uh, view into a country that I know quite little about. It also meant that part of the stories kind of went you know, over my head, um, especially like the cultural significance of names people are given or how people are being referred to. Um, I think I missed out on, I wouldn't have minded some footnotes or annotations to, to explain that to me. Uh, yeah, and also uh, it helps if you know who Idi Amin Moyes was and why he was important, because there are some references to Ugandan history, um, which I know just enough about to know roughly what's being referred to. Uh, but yeah, all in all, a very interesting uh, kind of character study of, of different uh, members of the same extended clan. And then the third book, uh, so Celestial Bodies, uh, as I said, set in Oman, uh, also does a similar type of thing where we follow uh, multiple generations of a family through uh, through time and, and see the impact of um, the cir changing circumstances they grow up in. Much more than in Kintu, in Celestial Bodies we really see um, the evolution of uh, the country, so in this case Oman, because where Kintu we have um, one generation in let's say, the far past and then we have a number of people in essentially the same period of time. Uh, in Celestial Bodies we really follow multiple generations over roughly the course of the 20th century. Uh, so we much more than in Kintu see kind of the changes happening uh, and, and so in both books, you know, people grow up as a function of, of what society is like at the time, but because we really have consecutive uh, generations in uh, celestial bodies, we really see that change happening. Uh, and we also kind of see people trying to, to make life for themselves at the end, like celestial bodies uh, being constrained kind of to orbits around the important people within their society, within their lives. and. Uh, in a traditional patriarchal society that is then uh, kind of the important men, the, the heads of the tribes, um, kind of are to a very large extent able to shape and dictate uh, the lives of the people around them. So again, it was quite a really interesting 
quite a few into a, a country you know little about. Um, but on an emotional level, I find it a bit hard to connect. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. So one is um, the, the narrative style. So Kintu is um, almost a series of short stories. Not that it is, it is connected. So it is, you know, a novel, it's not just a collection of short stories, but the novel is divided into sections. In each section, you follow a different um, main character uh, and you follow them throughout their sections. And, and each of these sections is you know, quite chunky, is 50, 60 pages, maybe even more. Um, and just, you know, is in chronological order. Whereas uh, in Celestial Bodies, every two, three pages, we switch point of view to different characters. Um, and not only that, we jump continuously through time. So there is kind of a whole bunch of sections that chronologically follow each other, but they're then interspersed uh, with something set kind of in the present day we get from the point of view of uh, Abdallah. Uh, and that's really a, a um, stream of consciousness uh, point of view of the thoughts he's having as he's sitting on this airplane, where he's really jumping around through time. Um, Reminding me a bit of the second section of uh, Simon of Fury by Faulkner, if you've read that. Um, but this continuous jumping in time, and, and because we have so many characters that we keep on following only for little snippets of their lives, and we don't really get into their heads, we, we get to hear a little bit about what their emotions are, but we don't really get to build up a relationship with them. And that for me made it hard to get really emotionally invested in the book. So while I, I did enjoy it, it was kind of as if you were observing, you know, celestial bodies. You're sitting on the ground with your telescope looking at something far, far away that, that's happening and doesn't really impact you in any way. So yes, that's uh, about all I have to say about these three books. So um, yeah, bowl away, bowl it away uh, and don't bother with it, I'd say. Um, Kintu and Celestial Bodies, both worth your time. Oh, I should have mentioned also that Celestial Bodies is, of course, the winner of this year's Man Book International. But yeah, uh, both uh, worth your time, both very different and yet similar, so both showing kind of the impact of, of growing up in uh, these countries that I knew and know quite little about, and, and just showing slices of life of you know those countries which on their own make it interesting. Uh, but also with kind of, especially kiss kin to like really human characters you can connect with. And in Celestial Bodies, although the emotional connection was missing, still, you know, an interesting set of characters showing you many different aspects of, of what life is like in, in different parts of Omani society. So if you've read any of these or are interested in them, I uh, hope to hear your thoughts and please do leave them down below. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. Until then, bye-bye.